Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. We're gonna have a card making party today. We're gonna play with some stuff. I've had this project brewing for months and I'm just so excited to tackle it. I have some time today, so I'm gonna start picking away at this. Um, so what I have here, is a stack of, uh, oh, there's a sketchbook in there, that doesn't belong in there. Uh, I have a stack of swatches and just pretty little paper scraps that, you know, right? You have this, don't you? You got the pile, fess up. You got the pile of pretty little swatches. You know, if you're a painter, you know, it's, they're so pretty and colorful, right? Um, you don't wanna throw them away. So we're gonna make cards with these and if you are not a rubber stamper, if you're not a card maker, you probably still can do this. This is nothing like really that, you know, specific you need. Um, I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty, right? So I got this set of stamps from um, a fellow YouTuber, Irit Langriff. She's got the coolest um, channel on watercolor. She's also a crochet designer and she designed this sweet set of stamps here. She has a couple of them actually for like swatching materials, but I thought this would be really cute to use in some artsy themed cards. And because they're um, like a squishy clear stamp, I can actually like collage up a card base and then um, and then stamp over the elements with the silicone stamps or actually I think these are photopolymer, but they're, they're clear so they're squishy. And then I want to try painting them. I mean, look at all this. Uh, then I want to try painting them with gouache. And I was sent this set to review. It's the latest Himmy gouache set. And I'm just going to try to flip this over without light so that you can see all the colors really quick. So let's do it. One, two, three, go. Oh, we did it. We did it. Look at that. So look at these colors. Aren't they pretty? There's a bunch of metallic colors too. And that's what's new about this set. So I'm going to open these up and give them a try. Um, so we can kind of see how opaque they are because if they're opaque and I can collage up a card base and what I did was I cut down a bunch of card stock because I thought I'd want a bigger, um, a bigger uh, kind of canvas and just a regular A2 size. So I cut some four and a half by six and a half pieces of paper. If you have any scraps or any like old mat sc stacks that you don't like the, the design of, you could use those too. But I'm gonna use this as a base. Um, then again, I might even wanna just do like half size of, like use a full sheet of cardstock folded in half for a card to have a really big card. But anyway, I made a bunch of just like basic ones, just pieces of cardstock so I could collage, make my mess on this and trim it to size and mount it on a card base. So that's my plan. Um, so I'm excited because I have so many little scraps here that I've kept. And I mean, look at these, these are like vinyl paint samples that I got at some point. And I mean, there's just so many cool things. I think I could make just hundreds of really cute cards. Will I make hundreds in this video? Probably not. Um, but I'm going to just see what I can make. I've got a bunch of jelly print strips. I've got just like die cut scraps, some washi tape that I thought would be really cool if I wanted to make some birthday cards. Um, I also have this pad of paper if I just need something a little bit different. I don't know. I just thought these things kind of were fun and whimsical and went together. And that's what we're going to play with today. I swatched all of the colors after opening them and stirring them up, and this is what this palette looks like. Uh, a lot of these colors are actually kind of translucent, so I'm hoping um, that they will be opaque enough to work with the project that I have here. Um, I find that the, the Himmy is not my favorite jelly gouache brand, and actually the company that sent me this is a also sells the Anagani gouache that I prefer because it's much more opaque, and it's and it's like about... 10 or 15 bucks cheaper actually for a similar size. They don't have the metallics, but um, I just wanted to put that out there in case you were curious. They used to do a 24 set that I loved, but they discontinued it, I don't know why, but that one was really nice and opaque. But this is what the uh, 56 set with the metallics, there's your metallics up along that road. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight metallics. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I like the old, the, the color palette and the old, the regular Himmy 56 set a little bit better personally, but, um, but you know, you could pretty much mix anything you wanted to. And this is what they look like all uh, opened and stirred. It comes with two whites. One's a titanium white and one just says white. And I just left the one that said white uh, wrapped up. I do notice there's a little bit of separation just overnight because I stirred these in swatches yesterday and I am seeing like a little bit of separation in the white. Um, and this pink over here and this yellow, I, you know, you kind of see where the binder almost wants to, wants to um, separate out a little bit. Uh, I don't think it's going to cause me a problem, but you know, that's a little discouraging just over overnight. It's like, are they thinning these paints down a little bit more these days? Is that why they're less 
opaque um because even some of the like the pastel colors are a little bit translucent so so i don't know but these are here and ready to go and now i'm going to start organizing and putting some cards together Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is sort my materials. So I've got this stack of blanks. I'm going to build my, my backgrounds on. Um, I've got the paint that I just showed you. I'm going to set that off to the side. And these stamps, I'm going to set those off to the side because these are going to be the last step things. So I don't need those yet. <clears throat> I got this little envelope of embellishments. So anytime I come across something that I would cut apart and use as an embellishment, I'm going to put there. Uh, background, so like bigger swatch sheets, things that I think would make really cool card backgrounds. I'm gonna put, <clears throat> I'm gonna put in the middle. Um, maybe I should do something for border. I'll put the borders and embellishments kind of there. This is big enough, I think, to be a background. Again, I'd probably cut those up, but I have a bunch of these cut up, so I don't need to do that right away. Background, so on and so forth. This is how I'm gonna go through and deal with this um, with this pile. And, uh, yeah, we'll come back. We'll come back in a bit once I've got it all sorted. All right, so I sorted through my pile of stuff, and I'll show you what I ended up with. I decided to remove this because all those, these are really cool and artsy. I have enough going on, I think, without these. So um, I'm going to put that aside. If you were curious, it's called Storyteller by Vicki Booten. I picked it up at Joanne Fabrics. So um, it was a while ago, but you might be able to find it. Um, then here, like, I actually found another little packet where I had a bunch of other things I thought were good backgrounds. Um, so I'll end up collaging this stuff on those uh, blanks there. These two, I decided just to keep as backgrounds. Maybe I'll put a little spinner on the middle and make a, a card that way, I don't know. Uh, this I have washi tape that I had pulled and this sticker sheet that I had in that basket as well. And then I did leave some things in the basket. Um, you can see all, a lot of those little color wheels. Um, I left all these like jelly print cutoffs in here and just a few cardstock scraps just um, to pull from when I'm collaging, but I figure I'd keep them in here because they're going to go everywhere if I don't. So um, now we're going to start collaging. I'm just going to push things out of the way a little bit so I have this workspace. And we're going to start with the background and we're going to start with big things first. And I really don't have anything planned here other than to just um, just create and make some cards. I have my portable paper trimmer right here because um, that's going to be handy for me trimming off excess and I'm just going to start um, yeah putting gluing some stuff down. Uh, I'll probably want to like cover up any of my own handwriting because I don't like my handwriting very much uh, and I got my adhesive done here. You could also use a glue stick for the most part. I think that a lot of this stuff would be pretty you know well it depends on how thick your paper is. If your paper is really um, actually, maybe I'll have that. I like warm colors. I'll have those towards the edge. Um, you know, it, it depends on how thick your paper is. If you have a thicker paper, you're probably going to want more, um, oh, I like that. You're probably going to need a stronger adhesive, but if you're just using, if your paper is pretty thin, you could just use a glue stick. Actually, if you're doing swatches, it's probably all on watercolor paper, so you probably will want the, uh, a, um, a better adhesive. I think that's cute. Um, oh, do I want it to hang over? I don't think I want it to hang over that much. You have a little bit of wiggle room with the um, with the ATG. Maybe I want to put a little bit of paint under there. So you know what? Maybe I will start. I will have my paint open, and I could just do a really quick wisp. Let's see what would look good. I think maybe maybe yellow. I think yellow would look good there. So. I'm just going to take a brush and do a little bit of yellow. Let's see. Maybe I'll do it along this bottom edge too. Just dry brush it so it'll dry really fast. Now, I guess if I put more on there, I'll wait till that dries so I could have it just in the right spot. Now, you don't, if you don't want to wash your brush, if you're using gouache right away, you don't have to because gouache is, um, it's like, it's an opaque watercolor, so it's not going to dry permanently in your bristles. Okay. And let things you don't like hang over the edge. That'll give you a really nice, um, oh, I might die cut that. Maybe I'll do a pile of things I might die cut. Like, that would make a really cute heart or something. Um, actually... I could just cut a heart out of that. That's even better because we all we all can do that. And 
are my scissors. I'm like, have I lost my, seriously lost my scissors already? That is not good. And then I'll have the leftover piece there I could use for something too. Or I could put it up there. Oh, you know what? I think I'll put it up there so that Hmm. Well, I'm thinking maybe I should wait until I... Uh, maybe I'll use that as an embellishment, actually. I'll wait until I've done a little bit more there. Let's see if there's anything else I want to collage. I've got so much of this stuff that, um, that I don't have to be stingy with it, you know? Maybe I'll do a little swipe of that. I think that would look cute. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry before I trim it anymore, and I'm gonna work on another background. So we got one. We got one background done. Um, I have no idea how interesting this is to you. Um, <laughs> I totally understand if you just want to, you know, skip ahead. I'll, I'll do another background, and then um, that's pretty. I'm gonna just chop that up into a card size. Like well, I can I can do that after. <laughs> I kind of like I kind of like that. I think I want to stick that down. Let me just put some pieces all over this panel. And yes, I could just trim this into the right size. I suppose that would work too. So you know there's lots of ways to do this. Let's trim that off. If I'm not gonna keep a scrap, I'm just tossing it right in the trash. We don't, unfortunately our town doesn't have recycling, so I can't even recycle it. If I don't think I'll use it, then, then I will just get rid of it. Because there's no point in keeping it if if it if I can't be used in another card, it's just gonna get in my way at that point. Oh, I will use that little little flower. Maybe not on this, but I'll use it in something. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it out like a flower. I could put a brad in the middle of it or something, maybe. But this is, you know, yeah, I mean, that's cute. That can go in my embellishment pile. Let's see, what else do I want to put here? That would actually also make a background just on its own. I think I'll throw that over into the bat. It'll just make a background. If I find something I think I just want to cut down as a background, I'm just going to stick it over there. That would actually make just a background on its own really nice. Ooh, I think I'd like a... I'd like a slice of that as a border. I'll play my cards right and I can get two out of one strip. But I like that kind of mid swatch look of that. And I like that. The nice thing about these swatches is that, oh, the backside looks good too. Um, I'm just gonna actually I'll put the adhesive right down here. Is that. They should be, you know, if you're swatching artist quality products, they're probably going to be light fast, so. Or much more light fast than like stamping ink, for instance. Think of that. Anything else? So, I mean, this is probably pretty dull to watch, but this is pretty much how it's going to go. I'll go through and and add things as I see them. Hmm, that almost looks kind of cool as well. Yeah, why not? 
this is the yes time of a project. Just say, if you're curious about how something will work, just try it, you know, say yes to it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make as many backgrounds as I can. And then uh, I'll turn the camera on when we're ready for the next step. All right, I've made over 30 backgrounds. This one's still wet, but I thought I would just kind of go through them real quick. And this one might actually be a finished card. I kind of like it. It's kind of avant-garde and kind of artsy. I like it. Um, here are the other backgrounds. Now, keep in mind, these are just backgrounds. I will plan to add some of the embellishment pieces that I've cut out over the years. And then um, I want to do some stamping on them. And then I want to paint the stamped images with gouache. So um, I'm pretty happy with how these have come out you know, so far, and I have another tutorial I need to record this afternoon in the other room, a uh, pastel tutorial, so I'm going to go take a break from this. I'm going to go have lunch right now because it's one, um, but I'm happy with my progress. Like some of these I just, I just trimmed down because they, you know, they were a big swatch seat and I thought that that'll be fine for a background because it's going to be hard to cover up some of these areas that if they're really cool looking. Um, so, is that... <laughs> like that needs something but whatever uh so that's what i have so far oh i do have some smaller ones because um i had some mono prints i had done and i've also added to those to make some backgrounds i have a bunch more of those but um yeah i'll i think that's enough backgrounds for now um it's over 30 cards so i'm gonna clean up my mess so i'll be ready to do the next step when i come back tomorrow it's the next morning and I'm back in my studio and I have put some of my stamps on mounts here and I've got a black archival ink pad for the step after this but right now I'm going to go through and start collaging. Now some of these some of these cards I thought looked pretty good um, as they were so I'm not I, they kind of already have a little bit of a collage element but some of them were just kind of like this was just cut out of a um, cut out of a swatch so um, I've got these really interesting vinyl samples and they're textured on one side and the other side because like this is where the vinyl is stuck and then the other side is just smooth plastic. So what I think I'll do is actually put a little bit of super glue because um, this is plastic on the like back side of the strips in a few places to try to tack it down without showing the glue. And Gorilla, I like Gorilla super glue because it's flexible. But, I mean, you could use whatever you want. I just didn't want to have a big gush of, like, white glue kind of coming out. So that's how I'm going to adhere down those. I will use regular PVA glue, though, for the uh, for the other stuff. That could be Mod Podge. It could be, um, you know, any sort, of, any sort of white glue. And I'm just going through, and I'm looking at the stuff that I have, like, uh, saved over the years. I cut out a lot of little, um, little color wheels. I'm just gonna figure out a nice way to put things in. Oh, I love these little swatches because they were like um, from some, I was uh, testing out some, that was like Turner. I think it was like, did I write it on the back of any of these? It was um, Turner uh, Ultramarine Violet, maybe? I can't remember. It was, or it might've been Renaissance. I don't know, but it had such a pretty granulation to it. So I'll just like go through and just try a few things and see what I like the look of. And just glue stuff down. I've got a like a stack of different of different things to try, so So yeah, I'm just going to keep playing and um and putting stuff down. I really like that color wheel. I'd like to find a background to use that on. Maybe one of these colored pencil backgrounds. Also got that. And a lot of it is just like, don't think too much, just kind of, just kind of stick it and go because any uninteresting spots are gonna be really good places to throw like, um, to throw a stamped image. So, you know, it's just kind of, just kind of playing and figuring out what you like the looks of.
there's a tack hole that I'm trying to cover up on that one, but I could, I guess I could cover it up with a stamp if I wanted to. Or turn the card around and see is there a different way I'd like to... Maybe some other little, oh, I got this little heart here too that could go where the tack hole is. So, I mean, this is probably uh, pretty uninteresting and pretty, like, uh, puttery. I'll probably just swipe a little bit of the gouache around the edge there, too, cover up some of that. But, um, yeah, it's just it's just pretty much playing with the backgrounds and seeing what I like the looks of. Like that. I mean, I think that looks kind of cool. It's very, um, it's just very basic, but... Yeah, just... Just play and, and see what you get. Washi tape can also be really good for filling in little spaces. Um, so I did have I, I did have a few rolls of washi tape here to use. I decided I was going to do a piece long enough to go down this side and wrap around the back. When you have swatch cards, it's great because you get so many colors that um, that. Uh, you'll be able to use them. Actually, I think a staple would be really cute right there. I'm gonna get my stapler here. I've only got my long reach one <laughs> down here, but that's all right, it'll work. I think that kind of gives it a bit of an artsy flair too. I just wanna kinda, of, I wanna cover up that tack hole. I actually looked at my trash can cause I had a bunch of little, tiny scraps from yesterday and I thought you know sometimes you just need a punch of color so you know <laughs> keep those scraps handy they might actually be quite useful that was comparing remember that swatch I was comparing the new versus old Lucas Cobalt teal they uh, they changed the pigment they used and the new version is so chalky and awful uh, which was such a bummer but um, but actually I ordered it from Jerry's at Rama and they gave me a refund so I'm not um, fine and I think that would look really good on there. So sometimes if I've got textured watercolor paper and I want to glue that down, I will use a I'll use double sided tape kind of to to clamp it, and then I'll put a couple dabs of wet glue as well, just for the longer bond. There we go. That looks kind of cute. Some of these I might not even add any stamping on, but um, I just kind of want to have that option. I'm kind of. This one's kind of a little bit stymieing because I love that that texture. So I don't want to cover too much up, but I also want to do, I don't know, I want to get, I want to do something to it because it's just kind of bland, plain on its own. I kind of like that. Um, maybe. Oh, that looks kind of cool because it kind of almost looks like flowers. It's just, it's fun to just try different things and see, see how they look. Maybe that one, that little one. And then oftentimes I'll go back to my first idea and then see, okay, now, now let me look at that again and let me see how that looks. And then sometimes when I go back to the first idea, I'm like, okay, I like that idea. I think I do like this one. So again, I'm gonna use a super glue on the vinyl, on the vinyl scraps. Let's see, where do I want it to start? I kind of like that plum. So and I'll just trim off the extra. I might use it on something else. The thing I also like about this glue is it's got a little pin and there that keeps it from, from clogging. It's a flexible super glue, so it's um, it's really nice if you have to fix something like, uh, I had to fix a refrigerator door. Uh, one of the inside, like the plastic pieces on the inside of a refrigerator, like the bin, kind of like, you know, the, the bins in the door, and it worked perfectly because it doesn't like get brittle. And then, I think I'll use double-sided tape and a little bit of glue on these. The handmade watercolor paper is pretty tough to 
the, the tape doesn't want to stick to it. It wants to like curl back on itself when I use that. I just think because it's so textured and so softly sized, it's not much for the uh, glue to grab onto. Oh shoot. Got some on my background. And that could cause a problem if I want to stamp there because it will cause a resist. All right, I think I was doing this one in the middle. This was my DIY dusk color swatches. I used um, PBK 11 plus, like that was Thalo Green. That one was a Quin Rose and made my own uh, dusk colors that way. <clears throat> okay, I think that looks pretty good for that background. I'll just trim that off in a bit. And I'm just gonna work my way through these different, these different things. I also have some of those. I kind of, I like the look of that actually. Don't second guess it, just glue it down. When, now I'm gluing over colored pencil here, so um, I definitely want to put a little bit of glue in there because that wax might resist the tape. So I just got to make sure that it makes purchase somehow. Yeah, I love the little, my handwriting is horrible, but I actually like seeing the little bits of handwriting on there. I think that's really kind of funny. I have no idea what I'm going to do with all these cards. Maybe I'll do like some, uh, maybe I'll do some grab bags or something. So uh, if I do, I'll put that information in the video description if anybody wants any. Maybe I'll just glue this. I don't think I need the, the tape too. The thing is, sometimes the cards you think are the ugliest when you're like putting them together, they're, they're, they end up being the prettiest because you're not so worried about when you're, um, when you're arranging everything, you're kind of like, well, I'll just, I'll just give this a, a try and see how it looks. And that ends up being really nice because, oh, I kind of like that. Because you're not um, fussing about it. You're not like, oh, this one's really precious. I got a really precious background on that. I don't want to waste it. I don't want to use just any stamp. But it's got to be perfect. You know, you don't feel like that when you've, um, when it's not like the best background and then you're a little bit more free to create. I'm just tickled that I could use these swatches for something because I've been saving them. I think they're like really pretty, but it's kind of like, I've also felt kind of silly because I've had this like overflowing basket and every time I do a new swatch and I'm not going to keep the swatch because like, um, you know, I might just, sometimes I have to swatch things out a few times or I'm trying to do some experiments or something, but it's like, it's not going to go in my binder because it's not the one that has all my like information that I need if I'm going to keep it. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's weird. The colors are kind of weird that I'm using. I got some metallic, I've got some rainbow, I've got some colored pencil, I got some vinyl. I just think that's kind of a fun, um, it's just kind of fun to do something like that. Oh, look at that. I mean, that's, that's cute. Wonky. My, I have such wonky little color wheels. I'm always making color wheels with new paints to see how well the colors mix because sometimes like, they get muddy. So I always see what you can do with a limited, the limited palette. Oh, maybe I'll go like this so I can cover up more of the Oh, that had that part of that rose, that was that palette. Oh no, I don't actually like that as much. I like it better this way. A little more contrast this way. Yep, it's a background. It's a background. It's not a, it's not a done. It's not a foreground. It's, you know. My battery shut off, so I have no idea how that the last clip ended. <laughs> uh... But yeah, just, just, it's, this, there's a certain amount of serendipity and randomness to this. Kind of like if you ever watched that video I did at the beginning of the pandemic where we went through all of my, um, all of my scraps, all my paper scraps, and then, um, did like, we made background papers with all of them. That's kind of how, that's kind of how, um, how that was. I mean, it was very serendipitous. I have, I have a lot of those backgrounds left actually. I mean, I've, I've worked through a lot of them, but I do even have some left still. And they're almost like artworks just on their own because 
you know, I mean, so much, so much serendipity and so much randomness went into certain papers being placed next to each other. And it's like nobody else is going to have that same card. Nobody could recreate that card, even if they wanted to. Um, and I just, I love that about like cards being kind of like individual bits of artwork. Kind of like that. And I got a nice area there I could stamp something in. Yeah, that's kind of fun. And again, I'll trim that off. I'm going to set the ones I need to trim together so I can do all those at once. Ooh, this one's the, my homemade metallic paint. What could I do to that? I don't want to do... I don't want to do too much to that one because I really like how that looks. That looks kind of cool on it. It's like, I really want to use this, this, oh, that does look kind of cool. I don't know, that one might be one that I end up not doing too much to. Maybe I'll think on that one. That's cool though. This one has a whole lot of, this one has a whole lot of need. Maybe this is the one that I could throw that, <laughs> that stripe on. Um... Ooh, I could layer something up over that dark stripe even. What about that? I kind of like that. Looks like a face, kind of. Ooh, I kind of like that. It's very, um... I don't know. It reminds me of kind of robotic looking to me. Should I cover up the holes? Yeah, I'll cover up the holes. A little less janky looking. Uh, does that have a scratch on it? How did I have that set up before? Or do I want to have a little bit of purple? I don't want to slide it down that way more. I kind of like that actually. So we'll go from there. Might even be able to tuck some little things in, but I'm not. I'm not planning that much. I'm just. I really just want to have some fun. Looks like Cyclops. <laughs> Circle might be too much. That's a one-eyed. It looks like a Frankenstein. I think I'm able to leave it like that for right now. That needs to be trimmed, so I'm just going to leave that right there. We're still just working on the card fronts. So um, one of these days, I'm going to find one. That this goes. To, I think that one goes fine with that, actually. Uh, they're all going to be a little weird, but I think once I put the, once I do the stamping on top, I can make these kind of make sense because like I'll put, you know, a paint tube and I kind of look like the paint tube is squirting out the paint or that like a pencil is drawing the paint. I think that'll be fine. And maybe some won't make it into cards. Maybe some will be like, eh, you know, and I'll decide that I really don't, I really don't like that one, actually. That one might be enough as it is. Let me see one of these little trimmed out ones. I have a bunch of these to trim out, too. Oh, well, I kind of like that. Let's put that on there. Because some I had to do a little more collaging just to fill the card base. So those kind of look a little bit more done. Like this one, I mean, I like the way that looks just as it is. So I think I'll call that one done. This one. Ooh, that looks kind of pretty. Ooh, I think I like that. I think I like that pink. 
So honestly, and when you're working on like 30 cards at a time, you don't, you know, you kind of lose the little bit of, it has to be precious, you know, so that's good. That's good that you can be kind of more... Be a little more forgiving. Ah, I'm gonna set a stamp block on that because that needs a little weight to make it <clears throat> lay flat. Oh, I like how I have a big open space there for stamping, so I don't think I'll add anything else to that one. Um, Know. It seems a little plain, but it also seems like it'd be a cool area for me to add some stamping to. Anyway, I'm going to go through these and figure out what needs to be added, what doesn't. Like I, I like that the way it is already, so I'll keep that. This is some nice... Like these, a lot of these are kind of... I feel like they kind of have enough going on for me to start doing some stamping. So yeah, I'm going to go through, make sure everything has enough on it, and then I'll start to do some stamping. Like those to me look like they have enough enough things happening on them already. I was looking at these and I thought they were four inches by five and a quarter so they were like layering um, A2 size but they're actually five and a half by four and a quarter so they're like I, I can upsize these to go on a five by seven card and that's what I did with this one and I love the muted palette here. I use some washi tape to kind of fill in the border um, which is actually kind of bold now, but I think it kind of works with these kind of muted uh, colors, but I'll show you how I upsize one of those. I've got the five, but four and a half by six and a half, uh, just kind of plain piece here. And I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this uh, kind of sized up because I like, I, I liked it. I liked it when I did it on there. Um, maybe I will, this, this tape looks like it will go pretty well. So I'll start off by adding a border and this is a great way to use up some washi tape too so um, so yeah grab your washi tape as well if you're going to attempt a big a big batch card project like this I think it's so satisfying of course like I said I have no idea what I'm doing with all these cards actually I could probably stick it on Nah, I like to wrap it around and then glue it down because I think it gives me a better finished edge and then I don't have to worry about the washi tape lifting up maybe I'll just do two sides though I mean, it's just, uh, it's really fun because it gives you all these different, like, kind of creative challenges. You're working with these completely random things. And I'm not running back into, like, my other supplies to try to find the perfect this or the perfect that because I'm just using, I'm making it work. Kind of like if I would go to a, like, a scrapbook retreat or something like that and I would have to just make whatever I had work. All right, I'm going to center that up. And then um, I'm gonna look through my my paper strips here. Oh, I like that one. Let's see, do I wanna go up to the edge? I think so. These strips are so, you know, when you're jelly printing, they look so cool, you know, when you're trimming your paper, it's like you hate to get rid of them. But then you have this big cluttery mess in your studio with all these things that you just couldn't bear to part with. So this is such a good project for that. Now I'd love to find a strip of a vinyl that would go good on that. I'm really, I'm really enjoying using these up because um, my sister-in-law gave me these when she was uh, when she was alive. She worked at a at a at a, a place that made banners, and um, I always wanted to use them in something, but I never knew what. And then after she passed, it was like, oh, maybe I should save them. But it's like they're going to be in that drawer forever if I don't do something with them. So. So let's do something with them, right? That 
that's kind of cool looking. It's fun to just kind of play with different motifs and see what what end up, what ends up working. Yeah, I don't like that washi tape now. After all that, <laughs> after all that, I don't like the washi tape. But it's easy enough to cover up. I don't know if I like that either. I do like having a little bit of pattern there. Maybe I need a vinyl strip that has a little bit of blue in it. I still have quite a few of those, so it's not like, it's not like I'm using them up. I like that it's got the gold. So there's a lot of this, there's a lot of this kind of like just puttering around with with stuff until you find something that works and you know that's uh that's pretty normal I think. I'm gonna cover up the wash tape, I don't like the wash tape. Anthropologist in the future will be like dissecting this card and be like, what was, what was she thinking here? I don't understand the craftsmanship. There must be some reason <laughs> she chose to overlap things. Then again, maybe we'll find the video. I'm like, no, she just didn't know what she was up to, what she was doing. have a really cool kind of uh, weight to them because of all the all of the paper strips. Oh, I kind of like that. All right, let's glue that down. This glue does have a smell to it though, just to let you know. It's not really strong, but it's there for sure. And... Hmm. Do I want to put more? I got room for stamping, which is nice. Kind of like that. Yeah, I like that. Uh, you can see I reuse my paper. I'll like work on both sides of it. <laughs> so you know, hey, this paper definitely, definitely got used, and now it's not being wasted, which I like. Okay, I'll just trim off the excess when I'm done. But anyway, I'm gonna continue on, and uh, we'll do the stamping next. This is so satisfying. This, these are all card fronts here. Uh, I need to, um, I'm gonna use up what I have for five by seven card bases, but I'll have to make a bunch. And then these are car smaller card fronts, A2 and uh, well, maybe a little bit bigger. And then uh, these are all my scraps. These are all my leftover embellishment pieces. So that's just gonna go in my card making kit cart for future projects. This is my basket of scraps. 
Ooh, that's so satisfying, guys. So satisfying. Okay, so uh, now we're going to do some stamping. And some of these I will actually leave as is, I think, because I think they look all right. But then ones that have some kind of like large area, um, I'll do some stamping on. Now I'm wondering how archival ink is going to do on some of the papers that have been like acrylic painted. So we will uh, we'll play with that. I've got crayons and brushes and um, different stamps like that. I just wanna I just wanna play. I think I'll do two paintbrushes on this one. We'll see how this works. If the ink doesn't dry on its own, I will just use some black embossing powder, I think. Um, I have these double mounted because I didn't have a long skinny stamp mount. It was long enough. I'm gonna let that hang over the edge. I should probably get a piece of scrap paper to put on there, but and I'll just I'm just gonna wash all these stamps at the end. These are photopolymer, by the way. I was I didn't know if they were silicone or or what. They're definitely photopolymer. They take the ink really well and they stick to the blocks really well. All right. Oh, I think that looks really cute. Um, so yeah, we'll just we'll see if it dries, and then I'm gonna paint those in with gouache. But I'm gonna um, I'm gonna stamp a bunch of things right now. Maybe I can do a tube of paint on that one. I think that would be cute. I like the idea of stamping over like the layers. That's why I'm not using stays on. I always struggle with like stays on um, doing the trick. Now I can make like a swirly of paint too coming out of that. Okay, like that. Um, and then like this is pretty well balanced, so I don't know like, and I don't think I could stamp on the plastic. So I'm gonna have to sidebar that. This one I actually like the way it looks just as it is, so I don't think I wanna do anything else to that. I think I'll just leave that. Um, I kind of like that too, but I also think that a paintbrush would look really, would look really cool on that one. So, or a pencil. I got a pencil right here. I like a paintbrush better. Let's see. Let's do a round or flat. Let's do a flat actually. And so I'm working since I'm just working on card fronts here. I'm not gonna worry about. Uh, I don't have to worry about my work surface being pristine because uh, if I get ink on the back, whoop de doo, it doesn't matter. I will wipe the extra ink off my stamp mount though, because I did see I got a little extra on there when I was... On the stamp I don't care, but on the mount, if I have extra on the mount, I'm likely to stick my fingers in it and then get it where I don't want it. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to run out of places to set these stamped ones to let them dry. Uh, now let's see this. I actually like the way this one is just as it is, so I don't think I will do anything else to it. Sometimes collaging is all you need. Really? Um, I do have a little room for something here. Let me see how a tube of paint might look. I've got a couple. Oh, I got a crayon too. These are really whimsical and fun, uh, fun stamps. I could, if I could fit three crayons, I think that, or maybe one, two, three. Let's try that. And then I could do primary colors. I think that would be really cute. So let's do one. Oh, I like that. Two, three, should I alternate them? Let's do this one in the same direction as the first one and then alternate the other one maybe. Avoiding the plastic. Oh my gosh, I like that. I think that's really cute. Actually, I kind of like this without color. I might leave that one just plain black and white because I think I'm gonna leave that one like that. I really like how that just looks. I like that. And that's gonna dry no problem because it's right on that uh, printmaking paper. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that one as it is, I think. I think that's really cute. I'm gonna stick it right in my finished card front pile. This one here, I used, I, I found a, just a swirl of colors and I just used that um, as is. Maybe a pencil on that one. 
Oh, maybe, no, I'd rather have like a pencil that looks like it's something you would write a note to somebody with. Like a, well, obviously you could use a mechanical pencil, but I mean like a more um, traditional looking pencil. I'm trying not to stick my head in there because it makes the camera focus go all wonky, but I'm used to like looking down over my my work. Oh, I like that. I don't know if I want to color it in or not. Oh, and you could even put write the word like love or something like that and have it attached to the pencil. Hmm, I gotta think about that. I'm not sure if I'm gonna want to. I should have got some sort of rack to dry these on. Um, now let's see, what about this one? This one would be a full card front because I didn't trim it down. I thought it was, I thought it had plenty of space. I think a brush maybe on that too would be cute. Like just along the edge. I wonder if it would... Ah, oh, can I, can I fit a whole brush there? I can just fit a whole brush there. Do I want to do that? Oh, let's try it. And I think I will fill it in, but we'll see how it looks after I ink it up. I don't like inking up on these big blocks like that because then you get ink over to the side. All right, my head's gonna go in the way. Now I'll have to be careful when I paint these or because I'm gonna use gouache and it will cover up the black lines. Oh, I kind of like that. Maybe I will do a tube of paint in the center. I think that would be cute. I gotta, yeah, I'll do the closed tube in the center because that center area is pretty boring. These stamps stamp really good too, which is nice because they got a little bit of a squish. I like that. I think that's cute. That'll be fun colored in. Oh my gosh, I'm running out of space. I have no idea if this is at all interesting or not, but hmm. Um, I think I'll do an open tube anyway right there. Which way? Or actually, will that make more sense to go that way? Yeah, I think just the way it's it seems to be facing, I think it makes more sense to go that way. This one looks like it would go that way a little bit better. Yeah, I kind of like it. Like, oh, there's some paint. They're looking out a window at a beautiful scene they're going to paint. I think I kind of like the, the story of that one, just the way it is. Okay, this. Hmm, I'm not sure. Hmm. It definitely looks painterly, so maybe two, maybe a couple tubes of paint. Do one like that. All these might not come out too, guys. That's something to, to keep in mind. And maybe like that. I'll probably keep these blank so they're the most, um, you know, versatile. People can use it for whatever whatever they want. Uh, but I do have some artsy sentiments, so I don't know. This is just like, this is such a, um, uh, such a process. And I'm just kind of like winging it. I think I'll take two brushes here. I think that would look cute. Move stuff out of the way a little bit. We'll put this one down lower. This is a really textured paper too, so I get to give it a good squish. And then we'll do the round brush just a little bit above it. I don't need to ink up the whole end of it because I don't want it to go out quite as far. Yep, 
yeah, I'm just going to go through and, and stamp on these things. I don't, I don't know if that's worth filming all of that, but not sure on that one. I kind of like the simplicity of that. Uh, well, I can hold up a stamp. Let's see. Oh, I kind of like that, actually. It's nice that you don't have to color everything in. Sometimes they just look good just being stamped because, because you got enough going on. And maybe brush is coming down from the other direction. And do a little flat one. And then maybe do the round one again, but just a little tip of it. Oh yeah, I like that. And I don't know if I want to actually color it in. I kind of like how it is. Uh, just black and white. I kind of like that. I'll think on it. That's one to think on. All right, I'm just going to keep doing this and um, yeah, we'll come back to the painting phase after every, all the stamping is dry. I started off by dividing up my uh, the pieces that I stamped. I put things in this basket that um, I want to add paint to and then I've got uh, the stack of ones where I've just, I'm just going to leave. If I did do any stamping on it, I'm just going to leave them just stamped. Like I don't want to really add any paint to them because I like the way they look as is. And then I've got this thing, it's just a smaller size, but again, I did some stamping on some and I decided to leave them as is because I thought they looked cool just in black and white. So, and as I finish these, I'll let them dry and then I'll put them in their piles ready to do when I, uh, ready to do the, um, you know, the mounting on cards. So I've got my gouache out. I've actually got this, this card here, the, these swatches, some of them went to this palette, so I figured I'd just use this paint to, uh, to paint these in and then I'll do the rest with my jelly gouache over there because I have a ton of colors there but I figured this would make sense just to to uh, to use this to begin with and I did pre-spray it um, and this is actually an opaque watercolor it, actually it's a supervision sponge sugar watercolor it's not super opaque so I still might need to use the gouache on it but I figured since I've got this color out anyway, I've got this palette out still, I might as well just use that. I think it'll show up. I think it'll show up well enough. I'll probably need to change my water a little more frequently. Or I should get another bucket like I do for watercolor. Now this, I might actually be able to just go over the lines in the middle because I think there's, they'll still show because it's more of a of a watercolor. But yeah, this will be pretty probably tedious and boring to watch because I'm just going to be filling stuff in. Let me go a little bit lighter. did pre-spray this but it might not reactivate as well as I'd hoped. I'm not going to be real fussy with these either because I have a lot of these to paint so I'm going to keep it pretty pretty loose. I think I'll go with the purple for bristles and caps. Just kind of that dark purple. Just to try to keep it um, and keep it kind of simple. And you know I could I can add highlights after it dries if I want to, but I'm just gonna set that to dry right now because I think that's probably that's probably fine. 
Now I'll pick up colors that I see in here. So if I see that I have like some strong reds, I'll put some strong reds when I paint. And I can move this out of the way because I'm not going to use that again. I only had one thing that had a swatch from that on it. So I can bring this over here. I actually have a little Stay Wet palette here as well. Oh, my table's so crowded already. <laughs> um, I'm going to do some nice bright red. Actually, it might work out well that this um, this paint isn't super duper opaque. This gouache, this hemi gouache. Because if, if it's opaque enough that it will cover the swatches underneath, but will let my, my line show, I think that would be actually pretty good. Oh, and these have actually, these have metallic, so... I can use actual silver on the tubes and on the on the brush barrels. Yeah, that will actually work out pretty well, I think. Almost like an embellishment, you know? Oh, and I also have some of those cards that have a metallic on them, so that would actually be pretty good. This is I'm not this is not an ergonomic setup. I'm always like crammed into a small space on my desk, it seems like whenever I do any sort of um, do any sort of painting. Let's see, what other colors do I want to pull through here? Maybe maybe I'll do orange because I've got so much orange there. And then maybe blue because I've got quite a bit of blue. And I've got several blue options on my palette. Um, maybe I'll take just a straight ultramarine blue and see what that looks like and I can always add to it if I don't like it. Painting across several layers of stuff, that's not exactly fun. It's not as fun as I thought it would be. <laughs> I'm going to do brown for the brush hairs. Maybe water it down a little bit. I also use paint pens. That would work well too. I think I need a smaller brush for... I shouldn't be doing this last of the day. My eyes are always a little bit uh, tired. This is really sloppy. I have some really sloppy technique here. The thing I like about the jelly gouache is being able to have it all opened up at once though and be able to see all my colors. Now I think I'll do just a highlight with white. I'll make myself a little puddle of white. There. So there's one painted, or two painted, I should say. Um, but I'm just going to uh, to go through and try to pull colors from the uh, the pictures, and you know, basically color. I'm basically coloring. That's that's what I'm doing here. Maybe sharpen that up a little bit. That's gonna bug me. And I might have to go back in with like a black paint pen and 
do some outlining if it bothers me. We'll see. We'll see how it looks. Um, I don't know. It might be a little too sloppy for me. But then again, this is just like a really artsy type of project. Oh, I forgot. I have a. I have one there. Let's do that in kind of a yellow. Um, yeah, we want to paint that one in. I'm going to use this really light kind of canary yellow because it looks like it would be opaque. Wow, I'm doing such a sloppy job at this. I'm going to need to get myself a little bit more ergonomically set up, I think. But this gives you the idea. In case you didn't understand what I was, where I was going with this project. Hopefully this gives you a good idea. I think I need to make that yellow a little bit more vibrant. Ooh, this one will work good. This is actually neon. Oh my gosh, this is so messy. Well, you get that, you get the hang of it anyway, right? You get the hang of it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna work through my my basket full of ones to paint, and um, yeah, I'll let you know. There's my basket. I don't know what's on camera. Oh my word, it's been a long day. Um, yeah, I'll work work my way through and paint these up, and some of them, like I might just paint portions of it, like. I'm looking at this one here. I really love the rainbow in the background, so um, I might just paint the brushes and call it good. And I might, you know, thin down some, like, like that. Let's see. Maybe I would do that neon orange. Now that neon is not dark enough. Maybe I'll do that, but add a little water to it. So that the black will definitely show through. I kind of like that. Actually, that flowed a little bit better. And plus that, well, no, that was watercolor paper. I'm like, that was smoother. It's not really smoother. Let's do like a, uh, oh, how about a pretty teal color? Maybe that's it. Maybe I just need to thin it down a little bit so it flows a little bit better. is isn't so clumpy. You could definitely do this with whatever paint you prefer. I think I'll leave the tubes as is though because I like the tubes like that and maybe a nice um do you want to do that red or more of a pink maybe more of a magenta and again not ergonomic I'm holding my arm my elbow way up in the air but I am going to reshuffle when I'm not filming get a little more comfortable Yeah, I like that. And then I can do the silver ferrules because I do I do think the silver works good for that. And a little pop of metallic I think is nice. I haven't found quite the right brushes I want to use with this paint though. Um, I'm using my acrylic paint brushes because they're a little bit stiffer than my watercolor paint brushes. I kind of like that one actually, just being, and maybe I'll just leave the bristles the way they are, or maybe I'll thin down that brown. Maybe I'll thin down the brown a little bit. I think I maybe liked leaving the bristles the way they were, but I've done one, so now I'm going to do them all. All right. So I'm going to keep on doing this for a while. And uh, by the time I'm done and we check in and we meet again, it'll be time to put these on some card bases. So I had this brilliant idea as on one of my last few cards. And the brilliant idea is why not use your brush tip acrylic paint pens? Look at that. They work so much better than the gouache I was using. 
Oh my word, I can't believe that. <laughs> well, you know, no, it's cute, it's fine, it's very painterly, but man, this is so much easier. <laughs> so, hey, either way, there's another idea for you if, uh, if you want it, anyway. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sometimes, though, you just gotta get outside of the, uh, you just gotta get outside of the craft room and have yourself think. And I was getting, I was really kind of getting over the whole, uh, the whole painting of these. I'm like, no, that looks fine. I don't think I need to add any color to that. I like the, um, I like this version, the one that's actually more like gouache than the acrylic ones, I think, better for this. And, you know, to be fair, to use the, um, if you're going to use the gouache, that would go way further than the pens, you know. So, you know, you get more for your money with the paint, but man, oh man, look how easy this is. It's not like you even need that much paint. Oh, why didn't I think of this earlier? That's all right, though. I'm glad I thought of it. Now we got two different ways. You know what? You'll be able to do yours and you can be like... I'm going to use gouache. You're going to be like, oh, I'm going to learn from Lindsay's mistakes and do something completely different. Oh, got my robe on because I had to go. <laughs> okay, it's going to be 30 degrees tonight or in the 30s tonight. So I went out to the pottery shed to take my, to bring my clay inside because if it freezes, then um, I'll have to like wedge it. And uh, right now it's ready to use. And if it freezes, I'm going to have to re-wedge everything and just be a big pain. And I'm pretty lazy, so I didn't want to have to do that. Uh, I think I'll do this red too. So since it was chilly, I put on my bathrobe or my house coat, as it's referred to in this neck of the woods. It's a coat you wear in your house. Do you say house coat or bathrobe? Bathrobe, I think of like, that's what you put on when you get out of the shower, you get out of the bath, you put your bathrobe on, but a house coat, so much easier. Oh my gosh, house coat you wear around the house. It's a coat you wear around the house. Uh, yeah, this works great. Let's give those metallic ones a whirl. Now that's going to be so much easier to do, like, to go, look at that. Yeah, to go around the, um, the lines if I want to. Maybe I'll even do this little sharpener all silver. Oh, whoops. I accidentally hit the, uh, hit the sharpener hole. I'll have to touch that up with a little bit of black. I really like these, um... Boy, I'm gonna have a lot of stuff to link up. I like these a lot because they don't you don't need to like um, shake them up to activate them. So they're very handy. Yeah, this is so much easier. Oh my word. Where have you been all your all my life? I'll probably still want to use like, let's see how highlighting goes with this. I have a fan they'll probably still want to use. You know what? I don't I wish I had a brighter yellow. Is this the one I used? Let's give it another coat. I might still want to use white gouache for highlighting. Oh, what color am I going to do there? Uh, should I do blue or purple? I think I'll do blue. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'll try highlighting with the white because the, they're not these markers. They don't need to be activated. They're pretty opaque, but they're not as opaque as like a Posca pen or a white gel pen, so. But there's no clogging, so I mean, you can't have everything, but that's a pretty good trade-off, I think. No clogging. Do a little shading there. Mm, maybe blend it. I should probably put these in something else so that I use them more often. Well, actually, I'm saying they're not very opaque, but they're certainly covering up my stamp lines where I make a mistake and... There we go. Maybe put the thread lines back in there. Uh, I think that's cute. Okay, let's see if we can highlight with these. So let's try... Oh, yeah. I think it's... I think it's... Uh... Yeah, 
it's not super opaque, but it'll it'll do the trick. Oh, I'm so glad I thought to try this. And now you have two ways to do it, right? You got two ways. And that's a good thing. But oh my word, yeah. Some of those ones that I thought, ah, they don't need to be colored. I might actually color them now because that is way easier. And I like how that kind of gives it a little bit of uniformity, kind of like you put stickers down or something. I don't know if I'm gonna end up using those stickers on any of these cards, but um, I like that. I like that quite a bit. Uh, I think the center of my two means a little hole. There we go. All right, there, I just had to share that brainstorm with you because I thought I was a freaking genius. All right, it's time to turn these into cards. And I had a bunch of these just jelly printed card bases left over. So I thought I, from like a previous project, so I thought I would put a lot of these smaller ones on these printed backgrounds so that I would be able to showcase some of the print rather than putting the larger ones on these five by seven cards. And something like this, I thought it would be actually kind of cool to um, maybe have some paint kind of dribbling out of this um, this tube and since there's so much purple in the background I decided I would use purple so I've got my um, my palette left over from yesterday here and I'm going to do that with the regular paint I may have to go right into some fresh uh, probably need some fresh paint for this the markers worked so much better for coloring the stamped images but I think as far as like getting this this uh, paint on there it's going to be better just to do it right from the uh, from the gouache so I'm gonna see what color actually I think I'll go with one of the metallic colors because um, that will have a little bit of a, of a shine to it and I'm gonna follow the edge of the deckled paper and I thought that would work really well because that's kind of the neat thing about this particular set of gouache is that it does have um, metallic pigments in it and I'm just going to let it get a little bit wider as it fans out. I swear it was perfectly quiet before I turned on the camera and then it was like oh the furnace needs to come on. It was I, I would just walk the dog and it is like in the 30s. Well it's probably up a little bit warmer than that now but it got down into the 30s last night. And the metallic's pretty opaque so it does cover pretty well. And then, I'm not sure if I want to color the tube or not. I might just leave it the way it is, but I think that looks, uh, I think that looks kind of cool. And then I'm gonna show you some other cards I did with the same technique. Didn't try not to get my poncho fringe into, uh, into the, um, into my paint. So these were all just some jelly printed card bases I had left over. These I'm gonna trim down so they're just regular A2 size cards, I think. Um, I just stuck them like this for now because I'll do that on my guillotine cutter. And then these were all just jelly print backgrounds that I decided to put the cards, some of these cards on. And I'm not sure if I'll do any stickers on top of these. And I might even go in and color that pencil now that I've got it on the background. I could use one of these background colors. But uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. And then with the, re with the rest of the bases, the rest of the card fronts rather, um, I'm just going to put them on 5x7 card bases. And I have a bunch just white ones that are already that are already cut down but I think I'll just go through my heavyweight cardstock stash of colored cardstocks too and just chop down a bunch of uh, card bases so I can do the rest of this uh, this big stack of card fronts. It's time to put some finishing touches on some of these cards that I thought were a little bit bland so I went and uh, I made card bases and glued them all down to card bases and there were a few that I just they felt like they might need a little something else. And I have these stickers here from Stationery Pal that I got a few months ago. And I think some of these might work all right. They've got a transparent back, so hopefully they won't be too um, uh, too obtrusive. But we'll see. We'll see if these will work uh, or not. And the nice thing about this is I can actually just kind of lay the... Uh, I could lay this, the sticker sheet down and then stick it down if I like it. I'm thinking maybe this little watercolor palette would be cute there. I'm gonna push out the air bubbles though. I think that's kind of cute. I, it's so hard because it's like, is it better with it or better without it? I'm not sure. Uh, should I add a couple other little, little icons with it? Maybe, maybe a little paintbrush. Oops, let's overlap that a little bit more. 
Well, that peels off well, off of the, the vinyl part, so if I decide I don't want to have it, then I can peel it off. Um, should I have three things? I don't know. Yeah, I'll do that little pink pencil. I think that'll look good. Some of these things, I feel like they need a little bit, a little something else. Might just need like a, uh... Okay, I think that looks finished. Might just need like a little bit of coloring or something like these. I'm thinking this one. And there's another one here with the crayons. I feel may, might just need to be colored in. But then again, I don't know. I kind of actually like that one. You know what, though? Let's fill in that stamping there. Actually, it doesn't even bother me. Um, so you know what, actually, I think I like this one. But, I'm, but I think the other one I might want to color in. I'm not sure, so I'm gonna set that one aside. Uh, this one, let's see. I don't have too many stickers, so it's like I want to be... I only got one chance, especially if I'm sticking it down on paper. I think maybe this easel would be cute kind of standing up on that heart cutout shape. I think that might be kind of cute. And... Yeah, put that little palette there. Typically not doing watercolors out of an easel, but... <laughs> and then maybe I'll do the three tubes there. And again, some people like it more plain, some people like it with more with more stuff. You've got to just do whatever you like looks the best. I think that's kind of cute. Maybe we'll throw a paintbrush in there too on the other side to balance it out. We can overlap a few elements to um, to make it work. How about a palette knife too? I love using stuff up, you know. Oh, that's pretty happy. I like that. I think that's really cute. So that one can go in the finished pile. Let's see. This one I haven't decided if it should go this way or it should go that way. Let's see what we could add to it. We could put three paintbrushes in a pot of paint. I like that. And I like that these are actually, that these are, translucent or transparent background because then I can overlap things or put things a little closer together if I want to. Oh, could put a clip on there. That might be kind of cute. No, I don't like that. Hopefully I can peel it off. Yes, I can. <laughs> That's good. Is there anything else I want to add? I think I like that. Yeah. Clustering things together too, I think when you're working with scissors is helpful. This was such a weird little, uh, little color. Oh, maybe I'll add that one there too. There. That's pretty cool. I think, I mean, I don't know, maybe other people don't, but and then I've got these two left here. That one I'm really not sure if I really need anything. Oh, I kind of like that cute little uh, the cute little bottle of ink though. And let's see, maybe a little tube of paint. This paper's kind of delicate. It's a printmaking paper, and I noticed it kind of um, peeled.
peels really easily. I don't know if I really like that, but it's already there. I can't really do anything about it. Um, put this little pencil pouch on the other side. I didn't want to sticker all of them because I have a feeling, I don't know, stickers off and don't really like stickers after I put them down, but I figured a couple that will be, will be kind of fun to have a few, a few that have them on them. And this one, I don't really know about this one. This one I was, um, I think I might actually use this for another theme, like just use this as a background for another card because, uh... I don't know, It's it doesn't seem to go with everything else. Now, I think I will use this for something else. So it's a nice background, or it could just be a, a, a just a note, or I could take something and glue it down on top of there. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do with this, but I think it definitely has potential. This I might go ahead and color with my markers, but I can do that later. This is what I have left over for scraps, which I'm so impressed with. I took those two color wheels and I actually die cut the little overlay. This is a waffle flower set. I'll try to remember to link it up, but I thought that was really cool and that would be really neat on a on a card or something used as a color wheel. I don't know, but that's going in there with my artsy fartsy scraps left over and that will go in my card making cart and then if I feel like making another artsy fartsy card I can just grab that. These two did not make the cut. Um, this, the paint just got really clumpy. I, I was putting on this background. I was just kind of um, Actually, I'm pretty surprised I only have two that I would get rid of, honestly. But yeah, these two just weren't working for me. Um, maybe I can peel that up and do something else with the background. I don't know. I might put that with the um, with the other card. I don't know what I'm going to do with, or I might just chuck it because, yeah, I'm not I'm not loving either. I'm not feeling either of these. I feel like these could go. But let's take a look at the finished cards now that we have them right here. Look at this. This is so satisfying. We went from the big tower of scraps to uh, two piles of neat, neat little cards and um, a little tiny packet of scraps. So I'm really happy about that. So, um, well, let's just uh, let's just take a stack out and go through it, and then I'll grab the other stack and show you what we made here. I think this is. I'll zoom. I can zoom in a little bit. I just don't want the camera to go out of focus. Um, I'll just I'll just flip through. I love the background here. I decided to um, use a bunch of different background colors. What I did was I. Um, I took all my heavyweight card weight colored cardstock and I just, um, I'm not sure what's on there. Um, I just fanned it out on my big table and each of the pieces I would just go through and I would hold it up to different colors and, and pick what I thought looked good with this. It's kind of like matting the artwork. You can add a little pop of color and, um, these would all look really good with white as well. But if it had like a white background, I liked having a little bit of color just to, um, and that can go, a lot of these can go a couple different ways, really. And that's how abstract art is. You could be able to look at it several different ways and it's still balanced and pleasing to the eye. Um, so I just went through and picked colors that I thought would work really well. This is actually a gel printed uh, card base that I made a while back, but I thought it accented that really well. So I used that. I hope I have enough envelopes <laughs> or I'll have to hand make a bunch of them. This one I almost thought I could put something else there, but I don't know. I didn't want to make it too busy. I was debating on whether this needed something else as well. Oops, I have that one. Oh, you know what? That should go the other way. I should have that turned around. I wonder if I can peel it up. I think I can, yeah. Uh, I don't know what, I, I guess I, yeah, because I clearly, feel, I clearly feel like the brush should be on the bottom. Sometimes with like your adhesive, you have a little grace period where you can lift it up and, and move it there. And this gave me a good opportunity to use up some of the um, colored cardstock. I bought a bunch of it back. Uh, they had several different options at Joann's and I bought a bunch of different ones. But yeah, it opens up that way. Um, but I think it goes better that way. Um, and I bought all the packs they had, but they weren't solid core all the way through. They were... Um, they were a dyed or printed cardstock, and so and there were some imperfections. So it's fine as a card base because you only see that little edge. But using it for like um, die cutting or anything like that, I could really see it, and it was bugging me. Uh, there's that one that we added the squirt of paint coming through. 
So, uh, so I've been just trying to use it up, and so I used up a bunch of the backgrounds. These are jelly print backgrounds. I don't, did I show you those? I don't even know if I showed you those already, but um, I wanted to use those up too because I did a bunch of those a while back. Um, I thought maybe I might color that. I'm going to set that one aside because I might color it and I just don't want to forget. I like how this one came out. I love that just a little random squiggle of greens. I love letting a lot of, like if I have a really nice granulating background, I like to let that show as much as possible. So anyway, I'm trying to use up that Joann's cardstock because uh, I didn't really like it that much. And um, I mean, it's nice and heavy. It's really great for card bases. But next time I'm just sticking to my white, ivory, um, and craft. And I would like to get a package of black heavyweight cardstock because I've worked through a whole package. And, um, and yeah, it took me a while to get through it, but I did, I missed it when it was, when I ran out of it. Uh, yeah, we just did those. This one I've decided to leave like this because I like how that those are on a gradient and then I've got rainbow colors there. I think that's nice, just the way that is. I could always peel that off if I change my mind, <laughs> but I think it's all right. You can go that way, you can go this way. It's however you like it. Pretty simple. I don't know what there's like crayon scribbles on there. I don't know what that is, but I kind of like it. I like this how simple this is. This was a big swatch sheet I cut into quarters. That's fun. I, I like the line work on Arit stamps because they're just very whimsical and um, innocent looking. And I think it looks really great when you stamp it over something bold like this. So um, yeah, these, this, her stamps are so fun to play with. Any of the color wheel stamps are waffle flower and any of like the sketchy looking art supply stamps are from Arit's set and um, I don't know if she has her website on there. Arit Landgraf, she's a YouTuber. I do, she has an Etsy shop, but she doesn't have it written on there. Um, this one here, I love just my loose, um, loose color wheels, a little bit of washi tape. That one I was debating if it needed more, but I like, like I said, I like to like that granulation show. I like that texture. They're probably look very dated in a few years because granulating watercolors are kind of being pushed to the max right now. This, I really like this on the white background because I did that gouache around the edges to kind of give it a frame. So I think that looks really nice on white and I love all the crazy colors and color and painting these in with gouache really helped unify things with all the crazy colors on it, I think. This one I debated, but I like that gradient. So I didn't want to color cover that up with paint, but I mean, the, the design's bold enough that you don't have to color them in, I think. I haven't decided if it's going to go this way, or if it's going to go this way. That was a Derwent, a swatch of Derwent watercolor pencils underneath. And I debated on painting this one, but I love just how that swirl of orange was like that. I decided to leave it plain. I thought about putting stickers on this, but I must have, I changed my mind and put it back in the It's Finished pile. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. When in doubt, when in doubt, leave it out, right? with stickers. When in doubt, leave it out. I think that's a good a good uh, lesson with stickers. This one, I don't know why I like this one so much, but these funky little pencils that are like sloppily painted with gouache and a little sharpener, I don't know. That just gives, I just get a kick out of that. I think that's kind of fun. These uh, soft tones, I did add some marker over those uh, pastel watercolors that I had because I just, it just felt way too sloppy and undefined for me, but I like the color palette. I think it's really calming. This would be really nice. I think to send uh, to someone who's a like like stationary and art and stuff. Um, oh, that was fun. Sometimes I do gold for the tubes instead of silver. Another another crazy one unified by color. I don't know if I did marker markers or gouache or both. I think I did gouache because the markers I think were a little bit more opaque. But then again, I don't know. I probably did it on camera and I probably used markers and I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I think that was one of the that might have been one of the first ones I did. I don't remember. Been a long few days I've been working on this project. I like that. I like the great. I really like the gradient with just the images stamped on it, and that's way easier than coloring them in too. So there you have it. Our project is done, and how satisfying is this? tidy little stack of cards. Two tidy little stacks of cards. I don't know how many. Let's count how many I did. Are you, were you counting? Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 
27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 45 cards. Oh my goodness, that's amazing, I think. 45 cards in three days. I think that's pretty cool. Only had two duds. And we used up a bunch of scraps. I mean, really, you gotta love that. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy these card making videos. I'm planning on posting a card making video every Thursday in October, so come back for more. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye. Actually, I did finish up these three cards and I thought I would show you how they turned out. I'm sure you were waiting with bated breath. Uh, so I did color the crayons here. I think they're cute. I think it looks good and gives us a little bit more of a finished look. And I did color the pencil on that one and I do like that. I just picked a color from the gel printed background that I used. And this one is still drying, but I can take the little weights off and show you what I did here. I had this uh, colored um, two hummingbirds and vine in my stash and I cut it apart and I just put this on top and I think that's going to be a lovely little card for someone. I will do packs of five of these artsy cards and um, just at random I'll, I'll put five in a bubble mailer and um, mail them out for uh, $30 if anybody wants a collection that is shipped within the United States. So um, you can email me if you'd like to purchase a pack of five, first come first serve. Um, yeah, so, cause I have like 42 cards here and that is way too many artsy fartsy cards. <laughs> I don't have 42 friends. So, uh, so yeah, if anybody would be interested in that, you can let me know. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Happy crafting.